Now, honourable members, at the sitting of the 4th of January, we observed a moment's silence for John Quinn, Her Majesty's Attorney General, who sadly passed away two days earlier. At that sitting, there was a palpable sense of shock at the sudden loss of our colleague. I promised I would give a more fulsome tribute at a later date. Today, I feel we should recognise John's work as Attorney General but also recognise the role he played in island life and the importance he placed on family. John was the dearly loved husband of Heather, proud and loving father of James, Daniel, Matthew, Josh, Sam, Amelia and William, a caring father-in-law, beloved brother of Margaret, Liz and Francis and a much-loved granddad, brother-in-law and friend. He will be sorely missed by all his family and friends. John's parents met in the Isle of Man in the spring of 1942. His father, James from Lancashire, was in the services and was training on the island. His mother, Josephine, was born here. James and Josephine married in September 1942, prior to James serving abroad. John was born in 1954 and was one of four children of the marriage. He had two older sisters, Margaret and Elizabeth, and a younger brother, Francis. The family lived at 7 Mona Street, Douglas, which was run as a guest house in the summer season. When John was five years old, he attended St Mary's Primary School, which was, at that time, in Stanley Mount, just around the corner from where we are sitting now. When he was 11, his parents enrolled him in a seminary boarding school in Lancashire, where he took his O-levels and A-levels. After secondary school, John returned to the island, and in 1973 he entered into articles as a trainee advocate with John Crallon at T.W. Kane and Sons. During this period of articles, John attended Chester Law College, and having successfully negotiated the bar, Manx Bar exams, he was commissioned as an Isle of Man advocate on the 1st of February 1978. Soon after qualifying, he joined the firm Neil & Co, which was then run by Peter Neil and Peter's uncle Eric. Upon Eric's retirement, John became a partner. The firm later merged a couple more times, eventually becoming Quinn Neil. In 1998, John was elected as president of the Isle of Man Law Society and served a three-year term. In or about 2001, John was appointed chair of Isle of Man Hospice, where he was instrumental in its relocation from Douglas to its new and purpose-built facilities at the Strang, an achievement of which he was justifiably proud. John served as chair for approximately nine years. During this time, he immersed himself in the project, from sourcing the funding for the new premises to overseeing their design, resulting in a splendid facility which we all know today. The island has much to thank him for, for him in that regard. Although John was not himself a Rotarian, his efforts and his work in the community were recognised by Rotary Club of Douglas, who awarded him the honour of a Paul Harris Fellowship. In 2009, John retired from full-time private practice and took up a position as in-house legal advisor. In 2013, he was appointed by Her Majesty the Queen as Acting Attorney General for the Isle of Man. While this appointment was initially intended to be in a limited term, in the event John continued in the position until 2017, at which time he was appointed Her Majesty's Attorney General on a permanent basis and was also appointed Queen's Counsel. John was quickly recognised as a source of wise counsel in Legislative Council and here in Timwell Court, walking with great skill the difficult tightrope of political impartiality. His contribution to a debate on members' conduct in 2016 was so valued by members that it was incorporated into our standing orders. John's contribution was equally, equally valued across all of government. Always hard working, John loved the challenge on any front. 
He was proactive when asked to assist on national level work, such as giving legal input into the island's money value review, and he played a major part in government's response to the pandemic. John had a positive disposition and was keen for Chambers to be supportive of his clients. He set high standards for himself and expected the same from others, very much encouraging a true public service ethos. He was very highly thought from within his chambers and his loss will be keenly felt by his team, not least by his great friend, the Solicitor General, Walter Wannenberg. Many members will remember seeing the two of them having coffee together first thing in the morning in the cafe just round the corner. They always looked like they were having a whale of a time, and we were always wondering what was so hilarious. <laughs> having become Attorney General at a difficult time for Chambers, John gained a reputation for a quiet, calm, but energetic approach to reform. When the Timwell Committee on Constitution and Legal Affairs and Justice decided to re review the role of Attorney General, John engaged positively with the review process. The committee's report, which was debated in this honourable course only six months ago, clearly sets out the considerable challenge John faced as Attorney General and the considerable success he had in dealing with them. John was never anything but the consummate professional. And he balanced the serious side of his role with a happy disposition. On two occasions, he was elected by this honorable court to preside over the election of the president. And I recall he fulfilled his duty with the usual calm, serious approach, and then enjoyed a wry smile afterwards after a few short minutes as the tenure of the president of Timwell. John's personal life was as busy as his professional. He had a keen interest in farming and possibly one of Bobby Sadler's top customers. <laughs> he was an enthusiastic and talented singer, performing just last month with his wife Heather and other family me members at Lazare Church. And of course, he was a lifelong Manchester United supporter. But he was never more content than when surrounded by his family. He was a proud Manxman community-minded, a true gentleman, and a fine public servant. I invite honourable members to stand in silence once again as we remember John Louis Marine Quinn and also Adrian Earnshaw, who will also be sorely missed near and far. <laughs>